Today, we're going to be talking about guitar strings, specifically acoustic guitar strings. We're going to run through on a guitar. I'm going to change all the strings. We're going to talk about the benefits of different materials, the kind of tone you can expect, and why you might be using the wrong gauge on your guitar. So, you want to stick around for this one. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store where you can peruse our custom designed t-shirts. Like the one I'm wearing, which is a black and white photo of our historic downtown storefront. So today, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about guitar strings. I've got a handful of them here for a reason. I'm actually going to change the strings on this guitar as we demo it so that you can hear the difference between them, not just in the materials that are used, but we're also going to go through different gauges because we're going to talk about what happens when you change the strings on your guitar. Now, the guitar I'm using today is a Taylor 114E. And I've chosen this guitar for a few reasons. Primarily, it is a guitar with a solid top, but with laminate back and sides. Now what that means is that what we are going to be hearing is really the response of the top and the strings themselves. So the kind of tonal EQ response that you might get from rosewood or mahogany or maple is not going to factor into the equation here. What we're really hearing is the top and the strings themselves. The other reason I chose this guitar is because it's a grand auditorium body, meaning it's kind of an in-between, best of both worlds, Swiss Army knife of a guitar, jack of all trades, if you will. It does everything pretty well. So it can serve as a larger body guitar for strumming and picking, as well as a smaller body guitar for things like finger style playing. What we're going to do on this guitar is go through a series of strings. Now, I don't have an exhaustive list of every single string manufacturer in the world or even that we carry, but let me tell you what we're going to be putting through this guitar. Now, first of all, we're starting with a fresh set of Elixir uh, NanoWeb Phosphor Bronze strings in 12 to 53 gauge. Now, that's a standard light gauge, 12 to 53. Most of the strings we're going to be putting on it are 12 to 53, just from different manufacturers or made of different materials. Now, Taylor uses Elixir guitar or strings on all of their guitars, and they have for decades. Increasingly, more and more manufacturers are doing the same thing, either with Elixir or Diodario's EXP strings. Even Martin's Lifespring strings, which are not coated but treated strings, are what Martin uses on their guitars. And let me tell you why. One, they're good quality strings. For the vast majority of people, they sound really good, they feel really good, but here's the biggest reason. They don't know when you're going to be buying the guitar. They don't know when you're going to be playing the guitar. They build a guitar, they put it in a case after inspection, they ship it out in a box to a dealer. Maybe it's a domestic dealer like we are here in the United States. Maybe it's someone overseas. So it might be a dealer that's not going to see that guitar for many, many months. A normal set of acoustic guitar strings or even electric guitar strings is likely to corrode in that period of time. However, by using coated strings, the manufacturer can ensure that a fairly new set of strings is going to be on that guitar regardless of the time frame when you eventually take it off the wall and go to play it. It also is a pretty good likelihood that regardless of who might have played it before you, the strings are still going to sound fresh. Now the reason for that is the coating. This coating that Elixir and, and Daddario use coat the entirety of the string to prevent dirt and oil from getting into or onto the string. Now I say into because on the bass strings they're wrapped and those things will go in between the wrap to the core of the string and kill the string from the inside out. But even on the non-wrapped plain strings like the high E or B string, those things will corrode particularly if you have someone that has a high acidic pH of their oils and they play the guitar. It's just, this is how it happens. So manufacturers will use coated strings to ensure the long life of the string. Now, why are we talking about this? Because some of you do not like coated strings, period. And that's fine. 
I don't think you have to like coded strings. In fact, there's often a debate on Facebook in various Taylor guitar groups of what are the right strings, for instance, to use on a Taylor guitar. I'm going to break any rules if you have an opinion that it has to be Elixir strings today. Now, I personally use Elixir strings for all the reasons that we mentioned. I don't have to change strings as often. I think they're good strings to begin with. I like the way they sound. Here's another good strong reason to use those strings. If you like the way the guitar sounded when you bought it and it already had Elixir guitar strings, or Daddario EXP guitar strings, or Martin guitar strings, know that you fell in love with that sound, which is a combination of the guitar and the strings that were on it. But you should feel free to experiment. Try whatever strings, and that's what brings us to this topic. What are the right strings for you? So, if you didn't know, there's all sorts of different materials that are used for guitar strings. So as I mentioned, these are Foster Bronze NanoWeb. NanoWeb means the coating Elixir uses is rather thin. Foster bronze is the type of bronze that's being used. We also have things like 8020s. These are Daddario EJ11s. They are the exact same gauge, 12 to 53. They are not coated and they are 8020. Now they should have a brighter tone because if I understand it correctly, there's more nickel in the string than on the regular Foster bronze str strings. Keeping that theme, Daddario also makes these nickel bronze strings, also 12 to 53. So these are gonna be even more nickel, so we can hear what that sounds like. What's really cool is these retro strings, which are nickel or Monel that Martin makes. And these are actually acoustic guitar strings that were closer to what was being used back in the golden age prior to World War II that Martin and other manufacturers were using. Now, in addition to these, we're going to also take a look at something that's maybe a little outside the box, and that's these flat tops, okay? So these flat wound strings are going to have a different sound altogether, despite the fact that they're Foster Bronze. And I have a theory on this. I've read various things, different opinions, but here's my take on it. Round wound strings, which is what you have on most acoustic guitar strings, because of the way that they're made, there's a certain attack that they have. And what we're hearing is the vibrating resonance of the string as it's passing through air. When you deal with a flat top string, it's basically crushed and polished and flattened. That wound around the string isn't pronounced and rounded. It's flattened out. It feels really nice on the fingers, but also has a really mellow tone. And I believe that's because it is affecting the air around it differently. So you're playing the same notes, the same frequency, but how it's affecting the air transmitting to your ear is different. I don't think it's kind of disturbing the air to the same extent that a round wound string is. What do I know? I'm just a YouTube presenter. So in addition to those materials of strings, we're also going to be doing two different gauges of strings. Now these are Martin Foster Bronze 13 to 56. This is what we would typically call a medium gauge string. And then we have some Daddario Extra Lights, 10 to 47. I went ahead and skipped 11s and just went to Extra Light Gauge Strings, 10 to 47. These are also Foster Bronze. Now why? We're gonna go through, and I'm physically changing the strings on this guitar, and that's all I'm doing. I'm not adjusting the setup at all. This is going to create different tension with these different gauge strings. A heavier gauge string is going to create more tension on the neck. That means the action's probably going to be a little higher unless you adjust it. And it's going to put more tension on the top of the guitar pulling at the bridge. Now it is my opinion that if you put too heavy of a gauge string on a small body guitar or even a large body guitar that's not braced for it, that you put too much tension on the top. A lot of people use heavier gauge strings to try to get more volume out of it, but I believe it's actually counterintuitive you create too restrictive of a tension so that the top can't really respond and so you're kind of choking it out. It's like taking a drum head and tightening it up too much. Now, the other thing happens if you go with something like tens. Not enough tension on the neck actually means that the truss rod is going to pull the neck back. You'll probably get buzz. We'll see if that happens on this guitar. Sometimes it takes a while for it to kind of settle in but you're also doing the opposite of what you did with the medium gauge strings and you're not driving the top enough. Now guitars are manufactured, they're built, they're designed with a certain string in mind from the builder. They brace that top to handle a certain tension and to move based upon that tension. When you change it, you're going to affect that. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't and you can't. You can, but know going in what's likely to happen. 
Now, if you need, for feel sake, a extra light gauge of string, you might be able to get away with it, particularly if you're plugged in, but no going in if your guitar sounds quieter and you just don't seem to get the resonance out of it, that's why. Or if you're getting buzzing, that's also why. If you go to heavier gauge string, you're might likely going to be choking the guitar, your action's gonna be high, and you might have uh, binding in the nut creating tuning issues. I don't wanna discourage you from experimenting. The point here is to experiment, but know going in what's likely to happen as a result of it. All of these strings, gauges, and materials have a point to them. They have a place in everyone's repertoire. One of the things I'll say if you go to a heavier gauge string is if you wanna tune down, you should probably look at that, or maybe even a mixed set of strings. If you like alternate tunings like dadgad or drop D, or dropping it a whole step or half step, tensions change as you change the tuning of the guitar, and so that's definitely something to take into consideration when you're going to a heavier gauge string. So anyways, enough talking. Now I get to change strings a bunch of times and play guitar for you so that you can hear the difference for yourself. Check it out.
So there you have it. Hopefully you could hear the differences between all of these various gauges of strings and the materials being used. In some cases, I think the difference is more apparent, more stark than in other cases. At the end of the day, here's my opinion and advice to you. Feel free to experiment. Now, strings can get expensive, so if you want to try a different material, maybe try looking at a lower priced uncoated string if you're used to coated strings and try a different material there. And you might find that you also like some materials on certain tone woods. For instance, I like the retro strings that Martin makes a lot on mahogany guitars. I like the strong fundamental that you get from those strings. I think it goes well with that tone wood. I don't really like it on rosewood though because I like the overtones that you get out of rosewood and the strings just don't seem to really transmit that very, very well. So that's my opinion. Your mileage may vary, but feel free now that you've watched this to go in, try different strings, different brands, different materials, even different gauges, depending upon how you set up your guitar and find the right strings for you. And you might find at the end of the day that you've been using the wrong strings for all of these years. Whatever strings you use, know that the perfect guitar, the best guitar in the entire world, is the one that you're making music on. That's why we put this channel together. We wanna to help you make music on your instrument. So if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. Visit our website, alamomusic.com, where you can chat with someone live, get uh, answers to all of your questions, and keep coming back. We'll keep putting out this material for you to help you get a little deeper down that rabbit hole when it comes to guitars. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.